All right, so chemical control methods. An antiseptic is a microbial cytal or microbial static agent that is used on living tissue. So I guess an example of this would be uh, you put benzalkonium chloride on a cut or betadine, uh, so I just, uh, betadine iodine, uh, cuts on things, uh, hydrogen peroxide, anything like that that you put on a cut that you could use on living tissue that isn't going to be damaging to it. This is, now let's compare that to a disinfectant, which is a microbial cytal agent that is used on inanimate objects and surfaces. I guess the most well-known uh, example of this would be Lysol, a disinfectant for uh, surfaces and things like that. This is something that we can use. You don't want to put this on a cut, I guess is the point that I'm making. And then there's like uh, sanitizers, which are agents that reduces the microbial populations to safe levels that meet public health standards, usually killing 99% of germs or microbes, whatever you want to call it. And that's what if you look at uh, usually uh, Purell hand sanitizers. Sanitizers. Um, Purell, whatever you want to call them. Those things you're usually meeting as a public health standard. All right, so phenol. And anytime you, if you've taken, depending on how much organic chemistry you've had, you know that this is a, uh, a alcohol group that is attached to a aromatic ring of some kind. And usually something like that. So that's just a general uh, structure of what it would look like. It has a coefficient, and the, the thing that makes this significant is that this is the first um, one that we were starting to use way, 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 way back when um, as far as disinfectants. And so because it was the first one that we had ever discovered that we could ever use, we compare any disinfectant now to phenol in terms of how effective it is. So if something has a phenol coefficient of greater than one, then it is better than phenol. <laughs> if it has a phenol coefficient of less than one, then it is worse uh, than phenol. And the, I guess a fun fact is that it's found in lignin. Lignin is the, I guess, the, the, the primary protein that makes wood and plants, you know, strong and woody, aside from cellulose, which is a carbohydrate, but it's, it's found in this, and this is something that protects plants from bacteria. Protects, I'm just gonna say it protects plants, because we're talking about microbes here, and this is something that it does. So cool. All right, there are also uh, compounds called phenolics. These are compounds that are derived uh, from phenol. So these are from phenol base. And this includes Cresol, which is uh, slightly better than uh, phenol. This is uh, hexachlorophene, which is used widely in the 1960s and 1970s um, for children who had just been born out of labor and delivery, and they would actually bathe these children uh, in hexachlorophene. And what they had caused is that it has some pretty serious neurotoxicity effects, which is comforting to know. I'm from the government and I'm here to help, right? Lastly, there's also alcohol, which uh, this is any time you have. Let's just draw the general uh, structure of an alcohol. Anything we have an OH attached to a any type of a hydrocarbon structure. This is uh, can extract phospholipids from the membranes and can denature proteins. Um, alcohol really isn't that good for you. Uh, contrary to what some people may say, it's doesn't do anything. And then lastly, surfactants. And this is an example of a surfactant would be like, uh, you know, soaps. Uh, and then like a detergent, uh, which are sometimes used synonymously, but there are different. And the thing that, that makes them work is they reduce the surface tension. And so uh, if I have like a phospholipid membrane here, and it's made of both polar and nonpolar substances, and I apply a soap to it, something that has both polar and nonpolar substances to it, or something that is mixed in water, and then we can reduce a lot of that surface tension that's holding together that membrane, and it will burst, it'll pop. Or if we're running water over our hands when we're washing, um, you know, when we're running water over our hands whenever we're washing them with uh, soap, it's going to accumulate a lot of that bacteria and wash it away. It grabs a hold of it and takes it away with it, which is pretty useful. And this is why we've been able to do that for a very long time. Also have peroxides and halogens. As you know, they both pretty much work by the same means. They both work by causing oxidation. Oxidation, you know, Leo the lion goes, grr, loss of electrons is oxidation. And oxidation is very, very bad. It destroys things. So, you know, you get a cut on your hand and you, you put hydrogen peroxide on it to, to keep it clean so you don't get any infections in there. Um, and there's also halogens that we can use. Uh, chlorine is the primary ingredient of bleach. You obviously don't want to put that on your skin or drink it. <laughs> that would be bad. Iodine, um, we can use iodine for, you know, the, the betadine, iodine, whatever you want to call it, the monkey blood, uh, which is was used commonly for um, surgery prep type stuff. And then we can also have iodine um, that is bound into an organic compound. And the advantage of having iodine in an organic compound is that it is um, 
easier on the skin. Uh, it's less irritating. Irritating. Very much like this pen is. And uh, it's a slow, slowly release. Slowly released. Okay, so, cool. Um, then there's lastly the heavy metals. I also have a, these target self hydro groups uh, inside of things, uh, certain protein uh, molecules. So we're you know we're attacking proteins in this context. Uh, mercury would be an example of this. Uh, this is actually what was used to treat syphilis. Uh, so uh, they use this to treat syphilis. And there are lots of people that argue that the uh, neurosyphilis, the neurological association that happens. Uh, with an, a syphilis infection is not actually caused by the syphilis bacterium itself, but it's actually caused by the fact that they are giving people mercury way back in the 18 whatevers to treat syphilis. And there's also silver nitrate, which was used uh, for gonorrhea infections in the eyes of newborns. So let's just say that you know the, the baby's passing through that mother's canal. Let's just kind of I guess very crudely draw this that the, here's the event happening and taking place here for whatever region whatever reason that was happening and then as the child is passing through that's the cord that's the baby as it's passing through here it is going to come in contact with the you know mucosal and vaginal regions and it will be exposed to gonorrhea and before they had access to things like penicillin and other little eye drops that we had we would use silver nitrates to treat that there's also alkylating agents and what they do is they transfer alkyl groups uh, to proteins uh, and this can either be really bad for the bacterium that we work with, or it can be uh, minor. Again, this is all just depending on the bacterium. There's no perfect uh, disinfecting agent. There's just varies depending on which bacteria we want to work with. Um, ethylene oxide, as you may or may know, is something that's really used for like industrial uh, industrial cleaning cleaning uh, of petri dishes. We use that to clean uh, certain petri dishes, but it's very, very, very toxic to you. So it's not just going to kill bacterium, it's going to kill you. Toxic to humans. So probably want to stay away from that if we can. There's also certain types of dyes and antimicrobial uh, and antiseptic uh, dyes. So for example, crystal violet that we use for our gram staining can inhibit the growth of gram positive bacteria, which would make sense, and permits the growth of negative ones by uh, interfering with cell wall synthesis or by DNA uh, replication. Obviously, if we're inferior with DNA replication, we'll, we'll be messing with both gram-positive and gram-negative. But the main thing is, if you have that crystal violet bound to your bacterium, you can't really reproduce and get a new cell wall by doing that. So, cool. And last thing that I do want to talk about is acids and bases, which we've gone over in very much detail. As you know, hydrochloric acid is a pretty good uh, <clears throat> at just, you know, clearing things up and destroying them. Bases, um, you know, certain ammonia-based compounds and things like that are also used. So, cool.